Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe and I've just come to ship and I've got to visit my mum um, and this was a little bit of an unexpected visit so I never planned to go fishing but I always have my fishing gear with me. Behind me is the, the Golden River right in the centre of Shepparton and there's actually a, a you can probably see it's I'm near a bridge and that bridge takes all the traffic to from Shepparton to Marupna, Bendigo, Echuca out that way so and it seems today everybody is travelling to Marupna, Bendigo. So what I'm going to try and do is I knew that the only way to catch anything in this water because really it's it's just got it'll have some Murray cod, it'll have some Australian natives, it'll have some redfin, has carp, but all of the stuff that I'm targeting today, like the Australian natives, are, are really not going to come out when it's cold. Now we're, we're in winter now and there's a frost this morning, so what I've done is I've chosen uh, this uh, warmer part of the day, and, and warm is a relative term, it's probably uh, about 10 degrees in the shade, it's a bit cooler than that. What I've got behind me is two really long rods because the water is flowing quite fast. There's been a bit of rain in the last couple of days and so it's flowing through quite fast. So I've got to, I want to keep it in a couple of certain spots that I've found. The only way to do that is keep as much line out of the water as possible. That's why the rods are pointing towards the sky and to have a fair weight on it. Now, what I'll, I'll do is I've, I've cast, I'm just using worms. I'm using um, fairly small hooks, size 10 hooks. One's got two worms, the other one's got one worm on it. I've thrown a little bit of chopped up worm in some burley that I've made up with just a little bit of breadcrumb and a little bit of dirt, so to colour it a bit, out towards the area, upstream of the areas that I'm going to be fishing. The two areas that I've chosen are areas where the water is actually slowing right down. So there's two spots in this flow where the water slows down. That's where I'd expect the bait to fall that's flowing down the river. That's where I'm hoping the fish are either going to be waiting or are going to come up too. So let's see what happens. So where I'm fishing is under that centre pylon to the right there's some water which doesn't move downstream. It turns around, it swirls around, it's like it's a little eddy and what it do, does is it holds state there. If I threw something about a metre out from that pylon, that centre pylon there, it would sink to the bottom. The other place that I am fishing is quite close. There's another eddy out in the centre just over here. You'll see where the bubbles, the closest bubbles are to this side. Sort of, they're about two thirds of the way across. That there is an area of swirl as well where the, all of the, uh, the water is slowing down. So bait will naturally fall there and it will naturally collect over there. Those two areas are the places that I'm looking at and I'm fishing late mid uh, late uh, afternoon so that I'm getting the warmest part of the day. That's the only time when these fish uh, are going to be moving about. But the rest of the river is really hard to, uh, to navigate. There's a lot of structure in here like branches, snags and things. So it's a little bit hard to choose spots that are perfect because there's so much rubble around to snag you up. These two spots seem to be quite clear. I cast in before I started and made sure that they were clear and so now I can cast to those with confidence. And the next thing that I'll be doing is just simply throwing in a little bit of burley, a trickle of burley, things like um, little bits of corn, little bits of uh, worm to float down.
Well, at least it's a fish. Another thing you can do is when you're using really small hooks like I am here, this is only a size 10. The reason I'm only using small hooks, I only want to present a small amount of bait. I've got one worm on it, but what I've done is small hooks are very thin. The bait can actually fall off them, or be pulled off them. What you can do is you can lock it on with like something like a piece of corn, which is what I've done here. So I've got a, a combination here. And look, cod and redfin will, stay, will take these uh, like this. And the good thing is when you cast in, generally what happens is the worm doesn't slide off because the, uh, the corn is wedging it on. So that works quite well. Well, I've had one other bite and that's it. And it's been about an hour now. I, I think I've probably only got about an hour left. So I've got to do something. I've got to draw all the stops out. I'll just test this rod again. I'll put the, the burley out in the area. I've been chucking it just a little bit in, bits and pieces, you know, like a, it's like snacking. I'm trying to give out just enough to get them interested. I'll do that for um, the next 15 minutes and then I'll probably stop and just hope that the burley and everything in there draws them up. I don't want to overfeed them because they're only going to feed a small amount in this weather. Because it's so cold, the water's probably less than 10 degrees. Um, they really don't, they don't use up much energy and they don't need to feed that much. So it might be that uh, you know a handful of food or less is all they require for the day. So I'm hoping not to overfeed them on that. But anyway, I've put enough advertising out there with the, the bits and pieces I've been throwing on. And I've been enjoying the traffic noise so much. But anyway, let's see what I can do with this. I'll uh, re-buy uh, re it, re-bait it, hard to say. Put some uh, more burley in and Let's see how that goes for about another well, 15 minutes. What I've had to do with moose spots, I got one fish in that area. I missed a couple of bites, which is a killer because uh, they were good bites. The, the rod bent right round. I actually pulled into it. I could feel the fish and then it dropped off. One other was just the, the rod bending around and dropping. So unfortunately, I didn't get those in. Then everything stopped. So after that, so in the first 15 or 20 minutes or so, all the action happened. Nothing happened for the rest of that hour or so. So I've just moved slightly down to another spot. This area here behind me has got a little eddy coming in. So it's an area of slow water. It'll circle around that eddy and bring bait into it. So I, what I did is when I first got here, I sussed out some of the likely areas. And when I saw this one, because I'd walked along the bank, I threw a little bit of burley into what I think would be a good fish holding area. So that's been there sort of simmering for about an hour or so and hopefully that might bring the fish in. It's actually warmed up a little bit which is fantastic. It was uh, pretty darn cold when I got here but now uh, as it's getting towards the, the peak of the day that warm temperature may well get a bit more movement. Hopefully I might get a few more fish. Let's, let's hope so at least. So I'll try this see how it goes. Okay, at least I know the carp are around. I'm hoping for some Australian natives, but if these are the only things I can catch on a freezing cold day, that's a good thing. So 
any fish is good on a bad day. I'll keep going. I might change up. Uh, I've got worms on there, so I thought the uh, I thought that the cod or yellow belly might go for that. But if this is the only thing I've got, um, I'll just try to experiment with a couple of other things before I actually pretty much just focus on carp, I guess. Well, here's another carp. This one's a bit smaller than the one I, I got before. Um, I am surprised that they're actually feeding like this in, the, uh, in such cold water, but um, at least I'm getting a little bit of action. So I'll keep going, but the trouble is um, I'm gonna run out of worms soon. So uh, after that, I don't have too much other bait. I've got a couple of other prepared backup baits I always have, but I don't always have worms. So. I might have to go to artificial stuff fairly soon. I've made up some paste and things like that, but th that won't attract the natives just like the worms will. I'll keep going, see how we go. Okay, so I wondered what had been taking my bait at times, and I found out. This is a Murray Cray, of all things. So they're not supposed to bite at this time of year at all. It's supposed to be around sort of uh, September onwards. I've got to watch out for this guy. He'll take a finger off. And he's actually been hooked in the mouth so there you go i'll put this guy back obviously but um just shows you they're around all the time and uh yeah he really doesn't want to make friends so he goes back you can just see the the white claws they, so they're different to um to our standard yabbies because they have they had the white claws but they also have those they have spikes on their body, especially on the tail. Just want to make sure <laughs> that I don't lose a finger here. But this is amazing. Catching these in winter is really unusual. But it was the warmest part of the day. But you can see there's spikes on the tail there. So, and he's hooked on a size 8 hook. Wow, he's got a big mouth. <laughs> well, I'm going to call it quits now. I've got Murray Cray's of all things taking my bait. And I've missed some fish. I've caught three carp in the day, no cod, no yellow belly, no redfin as I was hoping, but at least I've had a little bit of fun. It has been pretty good and uh, I've had the sun on me which is great because uh, it was so really, it's so cold, but what I'll do now is, um, is pack my stuff up and uh, plan out next time what I'll do when I come here, but the thing is if, it had, if this had been warmer weather now, in other words if we were spring or approaching approaching summer I know that if I got the Murray Cray coming to the area there would be cod and some of the bigger predators actually chasing them I'd actually ramp up my gear make it sturdier because those as you can see those crays are a reasonable size so the fish that take them are pretty big but that would be pretty exciting because that's where you'd actually you could bring in some very big cod so it's been an interesting time and I at least got something out of it so I try to salvage the day by getting any fish at all and if you can get something it's better than nothing and let's face it, a bad day fishing is better than a good day at work.